the rise of Zander in the Midlands canals, particularly South Midlands, been pretty meteoric in recent years. Um, and there are heaps of them in most of the canals particularly any dark murky ones, they really thrive there. The pike struggle and the zander just really, really thrive. So as the, as the numbers have increased and uh, they've appeared in more and more canals, their popularity has just shot up uh, and they're a lot of people's favourite predatory fish now. I think that the reason is because they, they can be so ferocious, the takes can be absolutely savage but at the same time they can pose a serious challenge and you can have days when it, the tiniest little taps and nicks will be from the biggest fish. Um, they fight hard, can grow to really nice sizes. Um, when you get on a shoal of them, they can be in absolutely huge numbers, particularly around boat yards in the winter. Yeah, just uh, a fantastic all-round predator fish. The best, best attributes of the pike and the best attributes of the perch. No risk of getting your fingers nipped uh, or rather well, caked in spikes, so obviously mind the dorsals or else you end up looking like a pin cushion. But yeah, absolutely fantastic fish. Really are one of the one of the most popular fish, the predatory fish going at the moment. There's no cuts allowed, I can't wait to start hyping up the crowd as I night through the maze Heading right to the stage, I'ma serve up the mic like a rice full of days Smoking hot like molten rock, folks are broken off when I blow the spot like soda pop Once I've been shaking, I'm the man if I can't be so brazen Steep in the technique I propel so the people jump up from the seats and the smell and the maze and more Anybody can safely afford in the fee that you pay at the door My rhythm rolls till it overflows and I get so funky you can hold your nose Hi, I'm George Roberts out here today looking for a few zander on the uh, local canal. The conditions are very bright and pretty windy but there's been a bit of cloud cover so hopefully we can find a few. I'll show you some tips, tricks, likely uh, looking spots, a few nice tactics to try and get yourself some zander. So let's see if we can get a few. The biggest problem most people have with Xander is finding them. Um, they can appear and disappear in, in a matter of days. You can be have a, have a decent shoal of Xander nailed down on your local canal and you'll be, you'll be uh, catching them day in, day out and then you'll go down next day and they'll have just disappeared. Um, they really do follow the bait fish, particularly this time of year. Uh, follow the bait fish, deeper holes, structure like your perch fishing, but don't discount the, the middle of the track like you would with perch fishing. They will quite often, particularly in the daytime, they'll uh, sit in the middle of the track in the slightly deeper, darker water. So those spots can be really key. Uh, boats, all, all, the, all the usual spots, just, just consider the, the inside of the track. Um, best way to target them generally would be starting out with a searching method like a jig head, a, 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 a shad, lot of, I'm using a slick shad here on a five gram jig head so you can retrieve it pretty quickly. You'll, you'll get a few knocks and taps, they can be very very finicky, you get a few knocks and taps. Then once you, you, you have a decent idea of roughly where they're located you can start slowing down targeting them with slower methods like the drop shot flies, uh, weedless, weedless slick shads, anything you can bounce nice and slowly along the bottom. Um, we've even been having hits higher up in the water today. I mean, the sun's been out this morning and a couple of the hits have been, been uh, higher up in the water. The, the Zander will go move up to, to warm themselves, particularly when the water's cold like this. Um, yeah, so those, those, kind of, those kind of spots are, are key, really. Deeper water, particularly with Zander. So we've been having a few taps and little bumps down in the uh, in the deeper water under the bridge, but they're really not feeding hard at all. A couple of little tail nips. So we're just going to switch over to a drop shot fry. Slightly buoyant body, fish it a little bit slower than a than a shad. Sit it on the bottom like that. Pop it. The feathers are going to flare out. 
um, even little twitches dragging along the bottom. As long as you keep the rod tip high, you won't have too much grief from snags. Uh, so yeah, give that a try. So we've uh, had a few fan casts around the swim, typical spot of a bridge, and we've had a few bumps in the deeper water under the bridge there. Switching over to the jig fry, see if we can target, target some of those uh, little taps with a little bit more, a little bit more finesse, a little bit slower. Just see if we can entice Xander into a bite, really. Even on the most finicky of days, when the, the fish don't want to feed at all, they'll still, they'll still, uh, they'll still take a lure if you put it in front of them. Few knocks down here, but they are being super finicky today. Just creeping it along the bottom. Bit of weight to that, and we're in. How about that? He's come through a stick on the way in. Well, isn't that lovely? The world's smallest zander on a jig fly for you. Nice. Nice colours to him though. Put on the jig fry, slightly buoyant lure. Nice three and a half gram jig head, sits it on the bottom, sits up nicely in front of their face. Popped it along the bottom a few times. Finally managed to get ourselves a bite on a very, very slow day. Lemon tiger colour, there's a bit of murkiness to the water, but to be honest, the lemon tiger, They'll hit it no matter what colour the water is. It just it just aggravates them, just irritates them into into a bite. And feathers in his teeth. Pop him back. So we'll just have a quick look at the tackle we're using today. Start off with the rod. Uh, Prism Xander Cast X, seven to 28 gram. Nice tippy action, uh, but enough backbone to really drive the hook home into the Xander's tough, tough mouths. Low profile bait caster, 13 pound braid. 13 pound because it helps you get out of the snags really. You don't need 13 pound, but it's nice to get your lures back when you get them stuck in trees. So onto our braid, we've got an eight pound uh, rage drop and jig fluorocarbon leader. Nice long leader, saves you retying when you chop and change between your lures. Go along with, uh, with all your kit, nice small bag, keeps it mobile. You don't need any more than just a small bag's worth of stuff for, for this uh, selection of lures, a few different colors. Canals are generally not gonna be particularly clear, so go with the brighter colors. And then just uh, speed flow two foldable net. I took it in behind my bag, hands free, keep both hands available for uh, playing and handling your fish. Just come in through here, lovely looking bit of water with the reeds. I've dropped in with my Xander rig and uh, got hammered by a nice pike. So I've just clipped on a tray, see if we can tempt him. Hopefully he's still at home. Just before the boat scuppers our plans. These reeds, absolutely perfect, particularly when they stand up like this, because you can still have a bit of depth to the water, but it will hold, hold the predators. Really nice bit of cover for them. And they'll hide into the, hide it, tuck right into the reeds, hide in, running, and then bomb out and uh, smash anything that comes past them. 
Unfortunately, I think we may have missed the opportunity with this one. Unless he's particularly hungry. He had a proper to go at it to start with. Really, really hammered it, but looks like he's he's switched off a bit now. Don't think the boat helps too much. He's not having it, he wasn't interested. Hit it the first time and then he's bolted. So we'll just switch back to the Xander Tactics. Supple fluorocarbon, good strength to it. Play it gently and you'll, you'll land the pike, no problem. But So the key to uh, catching the canal, Xander, putting in the legwork and finding them, it's only a thin, thin body of water, but you've got miles and miles and miles of water between locks quite often where the fish can be shoulder. So targeting likely looking features, finding the bait fish is just absolutely essential. Otherwise you'll just get lost walking miles of water. Um, as soon as you get a tap, make a mental note of it. And it's always the best place to start the next time you come along. But they will move, they will move around. They'll, they'll follow the bait fish, particularly as it cools down like this. The bait fish shoal tightly and the Xander will shoal in behind them. Um, Quite often, you'll, if you see any bait fish topping on the surface, it's always worth, worth targeting underneath those for, uh, for the Xander. Dusk is the best time as well to come and find them. If you're just walking the dog or something like that, come along at dusk and the, the bait fish will top right into late autumn and early winter. And then you can get a decent idea of where to start looking for the Xander. So I'll just go through a few of my favourite Xander lures um, from Fox Rage. First off, the Slick Shad, a nice natural rough colour. You can Texas rig it, big slit on the bottom and a slit on the top for holding a weedless hook. Be careful with that when you are targeting Xander though because the hookup rates can be a lot, a lot lower. Um, they can really, the tappy little bites and you really want an exposed hook the whole time. Uh, if it's really, really, really struggling with it, then you can put a stinger on. Generally you wouldn't put a stinger on anything over under nine centimetres. Chosen a rough colour because it's, it's going to imitate fantastically what the main prey fish are in these canals, uh, small rough roach, things like that. Uh, but the pearlescentness to the body means that even in low, lower visibility conditions, you're still going to be able to, the, the fish are still going to be able to see it. It's got a really thin wrist on the tail, so loads of action even on a slow retrieve, popping it along the bottom, burning it back. It's going to have bags of action, they, they do just nail it. Once you've located the shoals with a cast and retrieve method like the, the slick shad, you can start to target them a little bit more in a little bit more of a refined manner. Uh, one brilliant little lure for that is the uh, Drop Shot Fry from Fox Rage. Lemon Tiger colour can really provoke a reaction. Slightly buoyant body, so it's going to sit up and you can just twitch it along the bottom. Um, obviously, fish it on the drop shot, which can be very effective. But again, really good once you've located the shoals. And then a, another fantastic lure is the Xander, the Xander Pro Shads. It's in the name. Um, really nice lure in a, on a steady retrieve. If you just slowly burn it back towards you, they've got a lovely wobbling action. The tail can go crazy. And if you fish them on a light jig head as well, this is three and a half grams, they'll still have bags and bags of action and can really entice the fish to, to take it. See, I've got a slightly larger hook than you would usually use um, just because we're targeting Xander, so they, are, they will tail nip it and the hook a bit further back helps you, helps you hit into a few more bites. Targeting the far margin, 
There's a nice little shelf, a bit of a drop off, very typical spot for Xander to hang out on, uh, just on the edge of the darker water, but they've still got a bit of a bit of cover to ambush any any prey fish that might come come their way. Near shelf as well, don't ignore near marginal features, these reeds, if it's deep enough down the edge, just on the sides of the reeds, the fish will hold up there. As the temperature drops, they'll seek some slightly deeper water. Bit of vegetation cover on the far side. Any kind of overhanging cover. We're just twitching it, giving it... They're not feeding hard at all, so we're just popping it along the bottom. We're looking for fish, we're looking for bites. As soon as you get a knock, you can start switching to slightly slower tactics, like twitching a split tail along the bottom or drop shotting, um, weedless, weedless jigs, fish slowly along the bottom, anything like that. But we, I've not fished the stretch before. I don't know where the fish are likely to be. So I'm just searching out, searching out any likely, uh, likely spots. As soon as I get a tap, I can start to target that shoal a little bit more effectively. But in terms of seeking the fish, there's nothing, this time of year anyway, there's nothing particularly more effective than a simple five gram jig head, seven centimetre soft plastic. They'll hit that if it comes past them. So we've just switched to a slightly more bright pattern, fishing a little bit quicker, red-headed Xander Pro, to try for a reaction bite, seeing as the fishing has been so slow. Looks like we've got a nice Xander in the net. It'll be around three pound or so. Let's take a closer look at her. So there we go, uh, nice 50 centimetre Xander. Been really, really slow. So we've just changed over to a uh, red-headed Xander Pro for a reaction, a reaction bite and it absolutely smashed it on the edge of the marginal shelf. Not very happy to be out on the bank. At all, <laughs> juggling Xander. But I mean, that's a lovely fish. It's what it's all about. Beautiful, beautiful colors. Lovely canal Xander. So let's slide it back then. <laughs> 